In this video, we're going to start talking about the material in chapter 11, which focuses on infinite sequences and in series. So I wanted to give you a little bit of motivation for why we're going to be studying these sequences and series. Um, one of the really important applications of infinite series is to something called Taylor series, um, which allow us to represent all kinds of functions, things like sine x, log x, e to the x, as essentially sums of um, infinitely long polynomials. So we really like polynomials, they're really nice and easy to work with. Um, functions like e to the x sine x log x can be a little bit uglier, so what um, Taylor series allow us to do is to take some of these more involved functions here and express them as these really long polynomials. So to give you an idea of what this um, looks like, I want to show you the following demonstration. So here I have the graph of cosine x. Um, remember that one of the things you learned in Calc 1 was that we could do tangent line approximations. So here I have uh, the tangent line to 0 on my cosine curve. Um, but what we're going to learn is that we can get better approximations of the curve over bigger and bigger um, areas by adding more terms here. So if I have um, 1 minus x squared over 2 here. This is a nice quadratic approximation. And as we would add more and more terms here, I would be getting a better and better approximation. So when I have just n terms here, that's what we're going to call a Taylor polynomial that we'll learn about later. But you can think about adding more and more terms infinitely many times, and the idea of that will be this um, Taylor series approximation to this cosine function. So it's just a sum of lots and lots of powers of x. So we'll have this idea of this um, Taylor polynomial converging to this cosine function. Just to give you another example here, if I have this curve 1 over x plus 1, okay, if I go back here starting with the linear approximation, and then notice as I add more terms here, I'm getting a better approximation to the curve, but it's not actually over the whole interval like it was for, for the cosine function. It looks like I'm just getting a better approximation in this small little interval. So questions about when this sort of long, infinitely long sum converges to my, my function are going to be questions that we're interested in answering within this um, section. When do these things converge, over what intervals, and, and those kinds of things. So this just gives you a little bit of an idea of what we're going to be building towards, but we're going to need a lot of different tools um, built earlier in this chapter in order to understand those, those Taylor series. So this is just summarizing some of the ways that Taylor series are used. So we talked about um, working with our different functions like e to the x and sine x using um, just addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Thinking about what you would use just in summing up powers of x with some coefficients. Um, it's useful for solving differential equations, um, for doing certain approximations um, that come up in physics and chemistry. And you can also think about these um, infinite sums that we're going to be looking at as being useful to represent numbers like pi and e and repeating decimals. So those are just some of the applications that we're going to see. So before we can we can get to that material later in this chapter, first we need to understand some basics. So we need to understand the difference between a sequence and a series. I said that this chapter is going to focus on sequences and series. So what do we mean um, by these particular terms here? Well, a sequence means an infinite ordered list of numbers. Okay, so you could have a sequence that was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, etc. Um, other maybe examples of sequences, you could think of 2, 4, 6, 8. You could think of a sequence like 1 half, 1 fourth, 1 eighth, etc. The idea is that we just have a list of numbers that goes on and on and on and on. A series, on the other hand, is an infinite sum of numbers. Okay, so a sequence is just this list of numbers. The series would be if I added up those numbers. So you could think of something like 2 plus 4 plus 6 plus 8, etc. 
or something like one half plus one fourth plus one eighth, etc. Okay, and in both of these um, situations, dealing with sequences and dealing with series, we'll be interested in the idea of convergence. So we've already been um, exposed to the idea of convergence with our improper integrals. Okay, but convergence will be the big question with both sequences and series. So I just want to outline. Um, how we're going to determine convergence in the sequences case versus the series case. So with sequences, what we're going to see is that we'll be able to use the same tools for determining convergence of a sequence as for limits at infinity of functions. So we remember um, in Calc 1, we would sometimes compute things. The limit as x goes to infinity of some function f of x. That's going to be the idea that we'll use with sequences. With series, though, we're going to need um, a whole bunch of new techniques to determine um, when a series and infinite sum converges and when it doesn't converge.